Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. What I want to talk about today is three-phase balanced unity loads. And what I want to take a look at is the relationship between current and all the voltages that I've got plotted here on this phasor diagram. Now, I've went ahead and plotted our phase voltage and our line voltage. And if we take a look at VA to N as our reference, we can see clearly right here, if I look at EA to B, which is our line voltage A to B, I can say EA to B leads VA to N by 30 degrees. Okay, I can flip it and say the opposite as well. I can say V, uh, sorry, A to N lags E A to B by 30 degrees also. I could use this and go around and look at every one of these. For example, if I look at EC to, or sorry, VC to N, I can see that VC to N lags E A to C, or sorry, this should be C to A, not A to C, by 30 degrees. And I can also say that E C to A leads V C to N by 30 degrees. Same thing with our B phase and B line voltage as well. Okay, what I want to look at is the actual currents. So let's say we're dealing with a load that is, or each one of these phases has a 12 ohm impedance. Okay, I know that the phase voltage, we're going to say the phase voltage is 120 volts per phase. So if we use Ohm's law, we can calculate out 120 volts divided by 12 ohms of impedance per phase equals 10 amps per phase. Okay, so let's plot that on here. There's my IA to N. And the reason it's in phase is because it is a unity load. It is resistive. It could be a heater or something like that where I know that my phase current is in phase with my phase voltage, which also means that down here I would see there's current V to N. And in phase with my C to N, there's current C to N. Okay, so I have 10 amps per phase, which also means that I line equals I phase. I also have 10 amps per line. With those statements in mind, we can start to build some more of these statements. I can say that, well, if I look at where I A to N is, I can see that I A to N is lagging line voltage by 30 degrees. So I phase lags E line by 30 degrees, which is also the same if you remember saying I line legs E line by 30 degrees. Okay? Because it's in unity, I know that my current is in phase with my phase voltage. If we were to start to throw in some power factors here, if it was an inductive load, we would start to see it lag by 30 degrees plus whatever that cos or that power factor angle is. We'll look at that in a later video, but for now, let's take a look at these values. If I have 10 amps right here, 10 amps at zero, and I have 10 amps at 120 in phase with my C, and here I have 10 amps at 240, also in phase with my B to N. I can plot it on an HV chart, which I'm going to do in a second, but I just want to take a look at the physical relationship of these first on the phasor diagram, because we can actually see if I have a balanced load here, just by looking at the phasor diagram, we can prove that it should equal out to zero with our neutral current. Okay, so if we remember that this has an in-phase component and an out-of-phase component, and this has an in-phase component and an out-of-phase component, okay, this will cancel out this, leaving us with zero vertical on our resultant phaser. Also, if we remember that this has the in-phase component and this has an in-phase component, if I was to add up these two distances right here, they're in direct opposition to this total right here, which should exactly cancel out again. As long as all of our in-phase and out-of-phase is being canceled out, we should be left with a resultant on the neutral of zero. Okay, this is just a kind of a quick visual check that you can do. It's not to scale or anything like that, but it still gives me an idea that I'm on the right track. I can prove it with the math on an HV chart over here. If I look at IA to N, we said was 10 amps at zero degrees. Okay, I look at IB to N is again 10 amps at 
in phase of my VB to N, 240 degrees. And IC to N is again 10 amps at 120 degrees because it's in phase with my VC to N. Okay, 10 amps times the cos of zero should give me 10 amps times the sine of zero should give me zero amps. 10 amps times the cos of 240 should give me negative five amps. 10 amps times the sine of 240 should give me negative 8.66 amps. Okay, finally, 10 amps times the cos of 120 should give me negative five amps. And 10 amps times the sine of 120 should give me 8.66 amps. And it's important to remember that this is actually a positive and this is actually a positive because when we add up these coordinates, we wanna make sure we respect those polarities. Okay, if I go through, I can add up all of my horizontal components, positive 10 plus negative five plus negative five, I should see zero here. Zero plus negative 8.66 plus positive 8.66, I should see zero here. I don't need to do Pythagorean's theorem to know that this is gonna be zero amps on the neutral. Okay, so hopefully this has helped. Next video, like I said, we're going to take a look at some lagging power factor loads. And from there, we'll continue on. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.